right. Our, ours is like ours are Python scripts that just set the right exit code if they fail, and then yeah. otherwise exit, you know, uh, exit fine and clean it. And that's where the power comes. Yeah. It's super, super flexible. Uh, so that was it. Show us what the what the web interface looks like. Yeah, the, the yeah, I kind of did neglect that a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to see. Uh, <laughs> this is your home uh, page. Uh, uh, the home page kind of gives you, you know, uh, it links to Nagios, so it gives you some of the new things on Nagios coming up. And also, a cool thing about the, this is it tells you if you're running late. So, thanks for updates. So my uh, my my users out there are calling me on the phone saying, seems like the system's slow today. Where, where would I go here? Well, what you can do is you can set up a uh, like a ping check or a latency check on, for example, your firewall. Right. And then you can do a quick search here. Um, I don't have very many systems in here, but yeah. just do like this. So here's an exit. It'll pull it up. You can pull up that where you think the bottleneck might be. And then you can click on the actual service itself. And then you can get the details right here. So here's my okay, RTA well. of 30.9 milliseconds. Oh yeah, I, I give you a, a, for instance, I, I, I run a system uh, remotely that, that's got about 140 users on it. Uh, there's web <laughs> services and post services. So the big thing I'm running. Okay. Uh, I've got uh, three servers I have to monitor. So they call me up and they say it seems slow. So I'll SSH over to one machine and I'll do it at the top and see how it's going. Yeah. I'll do that three times. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Is there a screen I can yes. go to yeah, yeah. to get a snapshot of? But I don't have to go through. Go to three times. I just want to. You go to local host here, okay. um, and you can see like the current load. It shows you that now. Oh, is that one want, machine? That's one machine here. Yeah. Now you, what, you, what can you can define the service group. It you can shows you define you a service group. The, the, the okay, that's what I want to see. All of the to, systems you want to see. Yeah. So you go to service group. Let's just pretend instead of SSH, SSH just says uh, what's the process? Postgres. 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 It'll show you all of them right here. Status. Now, another okay. cool thing about it is if you go to availability, and there's not going to be much data on this because yeah. these are just test machines, yeah. you can go to the service. Uh, so let's do um, um, local host SSH. They'll have some detail. Right. Last seven days. Right. And then you can get an availability yeah. report that tells you it's off time, it tells you it's checks. It kind of gives you like an overview of it, uh, history of it. Graphs? Graphs in there? Graphs by default are not in here. Something you can definitely add on. Uh, there's a lot of front ends for it that you can put on there. And then the professional version is a lot more built in. Is that a subscription fee or is that a one time cost? I believe it's a, you gotta, I think you gotta pay for it. I mean, like you can get it as an appliance as well. And then I think it's a service. You said your company uses it, right? Yeah. I think it's like a, a service agreement that you also pay your. A and A and A? I saw a demo. I don't know what the uh, what the actual cost is. Maybe. Yeah, I, I believe their their model is they sell you it and then they sell you a uh, service you know, support contract, basically. The SSH uh, check is that like based on uh, response, just like for <coughs> how long it takes for it to come up with a login prompt or whatever? Yeah, yeah it's actually it. it's checking the version. I think the, the biggest thing we've done on that stuff like that is that when we have log request logs, we add any kind of um, request time length to the log files, and then we have cron jobs that run and pick up slow queries or whatnot and notify them off to us. So what happens is the users go, it's feeling slow or whatnot, but we'll know ahead of time because we just got an email from the last day on things that were slow, <coughs> and then we turn those into performance targets or whatever, right? So, so, so we don't only do it with this, but it's just kind of like a, you know. I just, they say it's slow, and I, I quickly like to see right. which one of my things is slow because they yeah. don't know. Right. It's just slow. Yeah, and I mean, you can make as many uh, hosts or service groups <coughs> as possible. Well. The hosts yeah. basically monitor the actual system yeah. themselves. And uh, a thing I should uh, point out is when you, do, when you make a host file by default, it checks it via ping. You can change in the configuration of the file what parameter it uses to check. You can check it by SSH if you want. Yeah. And it's to tell you the host is up or down. It usually checks it by then you can define all the services, uh, and then like, you know, we've heard several examples, I mean, you can get really flexible with it on exactly what you want to check. There's a lot you can do with it. There's a 
somebody on mine saying that you can also install plugins through like RPM and through package manager. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, I, I installed it through Source uh, just because it was a little bit easier. Yeah, I think if you install Nagios through RPM, you have to do that. Yeah, you. Yeah, because your locations are going to be different for your plugins. Um, you can change the configuration file so that they you can do a Source install with a RPM. Plug-in and, and RP setup, but you have to change a lot. Uh, your Whereas if you just do the, just keep them both in the same, no matter what you do. Yeah, you one or the other. Yeah. yeah. And since if you install from source, you can do that on any flavor of Linux. That's why I use my. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. I'm trying to get there's anything else. Um, so there's the host groups. So I just made one called Linux servers. Um, the service groups are very nice for like what you were talking. about. Did you go into the, the commenting and that stuff? Oh, no, I did not. Um, so say, for example, uh, there's, uh, let's say, uh, let's say the load is really high yeah. on Red Hat S. So you can go into here, and if there was an actual event going on, you can acknowledge it. So there would be a way right here to acknowledge it, and you can add a comment right here. And you can say comment, um, you can say, uh, DB so migration in progress. Yeah, somebody's doing a huge query. DB migration in progress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know why it's slow. DB migration. Right. Yeah. Okay, so then you just say commit. Yeah. And then. Not that I've never had that happen before. No, no. no. <laughs> it, will, it will commit that uh, comment to that service. So as you, you see right here, it says this service has a comment associated with it. You can go into there and you can see the comment. And the commenting, like with what you, is acknowledging, and that gets rid of the continual. Uh, and then you put a comment on what. So you could be like, okay, this is not a critical issue. Good to look at it in the morning. You can comment that, acknowledge it, and then it'll, it'll stop. Just the Magios Android app. Right. The text code. Is there a, is there a, uh, a plugin or something to show me? Like I've got a RAID array. If a, if a drive fails in the RAID array. Yes, there's a check disks um, yeah. one. Uh, I'm not sure how that would work with the RAID. You would have to. Probably the check disks probably would work. You'd probably need something more custom for you. Yeah, there's got to be like an SNMP. MDA, or whatever. Yeah. 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 You would need something more. Your Raid array is going to have an SNMP. Yeah. It might be available somewhere that you can plug in there. Yeah, or the open manage uh, plugin. <coughs> you, just need a, you just need a script to run the MDADM whatever command, right? Just to check it every so often. Oh, that's software, right? I'm not talking oh, about. Oh, hardware Raid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the cool thing about it is anything that you can run. Yeah. A, a, a yeah, but unless I have to write. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. I mean, go to that exchange. What was, what was the name of the other one? Monitoring um, Exchange is the other one. Monitoring okay. Exchange, those two right there would be really good. Um, you know what? There's a ton out there. Of, of I just remember that Monitoring Exchange is renamed because it's Zabbix Exchange now. Oh, is it? God. Something really? like that. One of those things that used to be Nagios but isn't anymore. Zabbix was kind of a... Uh, There, there's more than one. <coughs> there's also OpsView, which was sort of a fork-ish. Yeah, and there's Centurion, which yeah. is like the front end, and there's there's a bunch of uh, spin-offs. Can, can you go back to the, the goof, the web goof? I've looked in at the, the map link over on the left. Oh, it's like Chinga. Oh, yes. It's changed um, now. I what you have to yeah. do with this well, is easier to say. <laughs> You have to set um, <laughs> parent groups. So in the action, I didn't get into that far of detail. I just was kind of doing the overview of it. Uh, when you get into parenting groups, so you can tell, like, you would say, a great example is a virtual machine. So you get, like, a VMware EXXI server. That's going to be the parent party that's running on it. So the cool thing about that um, is when the main one goes down, you're not going to get alerts from all the other ones, <laughs> all the child objects, because you know the main one's down, you know they're down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you can also do that for, you, you see it as, uh, there's one here called network outages. Um, basically, if you if you have the switch or router set as a parent to everything else, if that goes down, it's not going to alert you for everything else. It's not going to be saying like 50 million alerts because it's going to know it's going to follow the yeah. yeah. There's no <laughs> point in trying to hit all these other guys because yeah. the switch is down between here and there. And then there's also, there's two different failed returns. There's failed, there's critical 
which is, uh, well, there's warning critical, which gives you uh, like an actual failed response. And then there's um, unreachable. So mm -hmm. you can get unreachable as well as where it just can't contact the system. So if you see a lot of unreachables and you know there's probably an application out there. Oh, and then, okay. But yeah, the, the mapping is interesting. Um, it takes a little while to get to work. You can actually, um, inside each host definition, you can call out a um, picture file. So you can identify the red hat then you can actually give it how large you want the icon to be. And then when you put the pair of groupings, it'll label it out. But it doesn't work that well, because when you get a lot of systems on here, it just doesn't look that right. There's some front ends and add-ons. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, whatever algorithm we use to draw it, 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 what I've been able to bring up just looks like a mess. It, uh, yeah, it, that's common. That's very common. Uh, there are other, you know, there's add-ons to it to do a better job. Or that I guess exchange or the, the plugins might just look up like mapping. Um, and also that of course the paper has a really a really nice uh, or it's got the built in um, yeah. charts and all that stuff in there. But yeah I don't you have to set up the status map that CGI file uh, in order to run the uh, map which I didn't set down this testing so but yeah I mean you can get you can Get to get kind of get intended, okay with it, but once you get past the certain kind of servers, it just starts to be uh, kind of like a mess. <laughs> yes? On the topic of the mapping stuff, there's a plugin for Cacti that integrates with Nagios and you can pull the data from there. So there's an alternative if you don't want to do something Nagios specific, you can use Cacti instead to uh, get around that little issue. So Cacti will pull like the Nagios data and use yeah, because I'll start an RD, RRD information anyway, so it just pulls it from there. And then, uh, so you, I kind of neg neglected the, the UI a little bit. So you have a um, tactical overview. You can tell like, right on here if you have any problems. Um, when you do uh, acknowledge an issue, it'll tell you that it's acknowledged. It'll tell you on here that, um, you know, host enabled, service enabled. It'll tell you right here. So which ones actually have problems versus which ones are problems with acknowledgements. Um, you can disable the, the uh, notifications if you want if it's an ongoing issue. Um, you also do your scheduled maintenance from here as well. So if you go into this host and you want to uh, schedule downtime. Oh, and the nice thing about this, <laughs> you schedule downtime for the host but not the services, you're still going to get alerted on the services. So you almost always want to schedule downtime for all the services on the host, and when you do that, it gives you a little option. Um, I guess I think it did. There was a way to, there's two different ways to do it. There's the start end time, and there's the more flexible one. One of them gives you the option to actually include the host too, so you can do all of them at once, so that you're scheduling downtime for the host and services. So, you want to be, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you do, you know, downtime host, you're still going to get all the service events. Uh, you can do that from here. Then you can actually reschedule. Uh, you can go to the system. Uh, you can see like the configuration of each thing. So if you don't want to go into the CLI to look at the uh, configuration, you can go into like hosts. Uh, and then you can go across here. You can see how where it's what it's running, uh, the check period, all those little uh, switches that I showed you in the template file. You can see exactly what's applied to each system on here. So these are the notifications down, unreachable recovery. Cool, you can just get all that one area here. And then another cool thing down here is the scheduling queue. So you can see the time checks of when it was last checked and when it's going to check next. Um, of, uh, and you can basically just check the queue that choose. That's my, uh, usually, uh, now your system can handle quite a few. It runs like a parallel process. So you yeah, can run a ton of checks um, without much problem. If you're running everything every, every one minute, you might run into a problem if you have like a huge difficulty. Can you have it uh, automatically restart services in the commands? So like on this on the retry, if it's like a not, trap type like thing. Have it, yeah, on the retry, <coughs> have it say service restart on the I think you can have it notify another like to notify another service, but built in by itself. I don't so like you would notify another service. It actually and does. It would tell it to restart. It'll restart yeah. it. 
built yeah, in. You, you can, can run whatever you want. To it. It's actually identified the same way that a command is in there. So you just identify oh, so that. Oh, so you just run the, uh, instead of running a check command, you would just run the restart command, basically. Yeah. You would make a script that does what you want to add. Yep. Okay. Just call it. So yeah, you could do, but it's not built in. You have to make Yeah, there's a name for it. I'll try to Google really? it right quick. I, yeah, I haven't seen it built in, but you can write a, like, a little script for it. The evil is strong in this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's down. Handlers. Yeah, it'll come back. Yeah. That's what it is. What's it called? Event handlers. Oh, yes. Okay. And that actually, uh, that is an option. If you go into which box is this? something really crazy is going on, you can actually uh, just disable um, notifications system-wide from there. So that's another thing that's kind of helpful if there's chaos going on. Um, you have your event log here, which kind of gives you a history of problems uh, that come up. Does it, notifications, does it history. log syslog? For like parsing, like you want to look for something specific, or uh, like sending logs to it, where you know those notifications you're seeing, yeah. uh, whether it would throw in log lines, logs, you know. I mean, oh, I, I have a networking, so I see switch yeah. ports going up and down. Would it line up switch ports going up and down, and what ports to the ground? Or? Wait, I'm not sure. If you're, wait, you, you know, you can't send logs to. It's not like a syslogger. But what you can do is on your checks, you can define the type of response you want to get back. And you can pull from that. Um, so when you're pulling that response, you can pull part of that log. You can put that into part of you like a cat to actually display it. Okay. You're going to have a kickback cat. I've seen that before. Um, it doesn't <coughs> necessarily collect logs, but you can uh, provide more information. Parse out from a log. You can parse file. out from a log file okay. display in here if you want more detail. So like, for example, if you see You can see how it's, it's pulling this proxy okay and gives you some examples. I have seen where people can use like a cat command or something like that or a, a, um, a, a tail or something like that to pull that and split that. Yeah, like the top five yeah. processes. Like a top, yeah. You can do that. So anything, any command that you can send and retrieve something, which for log files you can retrieve tail and something like that, I, you can port it. But you wouldn't necessarily send log files to it. So is there a place in, in Nagios Core for extra information? I forget exactly what it's called, but beyond that first line, is there a way to display that data in Core? Um, what do you mean by the yeah. Well, like... Do you collect more information? It's just for the lines. Uh, it's part of their plugin specification, I know, where the first line is like the okay and the numbers. Oh, yes. Whatever. Yeah, and then beyond that, is further details. So I've done in I haven't done it in, in Linux, but for Windows I've done something where maybe with PowerShell I'll output some information that will just kind of you can help get to the bottom of things. The most common way of doing that is like for the text alerts, you shorten the lines that you get, and then for the email alerts, you, you uh, push them out more to get more detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pull out more detail if you want. You can set lines uh, under the, uh, for example, for the notifications like notify by email, you can set how far you want. Yeah, a common thing I, I've seen in uh, previous installations where 
Um, you only set out short lines for text notifications because you don't want like five yeah. texts for one alert. And then for the email, you get four people. Perf data is what they call it. Uh, yeah. Performance data. data. That's actually, uh, that's right in this template. Right, but most, most, I don't know, everywhere I've been, it's SSH key only. Going through a web, you can't load your keys in order to do an SSH well, term right. session and all that stuff, right? So it's like... No, but you can have it launch a, a, through a service. Yeah, so, like we, our monitoring system, uh, you know, we have 400 switches that we monitor. So if I want to get into one and configure it, I just click SSH, and it launches PuTTY, an SSH session right into it. So then I'm not doing it through the web interface. It actually launches a separate program. Oh, an extra room. Yeah, 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 instead of, you know, like... It'd be like a mail to yeah, FTP I URL. Gotcha, I got you. Like yeah, URL with yeah, SSH colon. All right. And slash slash, yeah. and then it knows, then you register that to yeah. launch. Yeah, to launch buddy. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just a shortcut. Yeah. Yeah, because for me to take out... But isn't the host right there? Like, I, I don't know. I could call me old-fashioned. Yeah. It's called yeah. double-click on that, and then middle-click it, and then... But yeah, it, it doesn't have that much. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else on here you guys wanted to look at, or and then once again, you know, this is the core version. Uh, basically, the the professional version, you don't have to get the command line at all. You can just point it, scan the yeah. network, and it'll make the most, and you just tell yeah, it. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is it's cost. <laughs> do, do we, Rick? <laughs> I don't ever see it. Uh, that's on the other side of the fence. They just tell me when my stuff's done. But what is flipping? Flapping? Uh, flapping? That's, flapping. Yeah, for example, so let's say a host is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. What it will do, and you can set this behavior, you don't have to have it do this. But what you can do is you can uh, determine it's an intermittent service and it'll disable notifications. So you're not constantly getting. Services up, services down, services up, services down. You can basically what it does is after it does it so many times, it will uh, disable notifications. Uh, and then you can set, so if there's a really critical um, server out there, you can turn no flapping off. You want to know exactly what it's doing, or if there's other servers out there where that's going to be, like you know you're working on it, and it keeps doing it. It helps cut down on the noise, basically. My, my personal favorite is we had a hard a uh, power supply failing, so it would, it would be up and then it would go down and as soon as it finished booting it would go down again and it would finish booting and go down again and flap it. Yes. <laughs> That's when you have to remove power and just leave it off. That's how you test your file systems. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down while 
while he's trying to recover from the journey. So you have to say you're testing that battery in that RAID uh, yeah. device you got there. Yeah. Another useful one in here is like problem section. Um, there's no problems detected here, but it will basically if it'll list out just problems that are going to be doing by services. And you can break it down to unhandled. Uh, so if there's a problem that hasn't been acknowledged yet or there's no comments on it, you can go to unhandled so the ones that there's nothing been done to them. Um, network out outages is pretty interesting. That works by using that uh, parenting child relationship. So if one goes down and can tell you, okay, this is blocking LBs. You know? So that's under the block. So this is your test thing that we've yeah, seen. Yeah, this right? is. I just said how, how big of a network are you actually monitoring? Well, right now, the I used to be in an environment with Nagios. We had about 200 okay. systems in there. Uh, the current environment I'm in, we have probably about 2,000. Wow. But we're actually using Zabbix. Yeah. Which it was already. It's already set up there, so I'm learning Zabbix now. But so in a few more months, you come back and talk to us about Zabbix. About Zabbix, yeah. <laughs> Zabbix is a little bit different. different. Yeah. I, I was just by way of demonstration, if you want to go to your remote system, you could do a service stop on, on NRP. Yeah, I mean, I can kill this guy if you want. Um, I, I was just going to say, just stop the service so they can oh, see yeah. what it looks like when it goes down. I actually didn't set this up as a service yet. Uh, so what we can do kill the uh, kill the process. Yep. This is number four eight. Now I do have a set uh, by default that I can check every four minutes. Okay. So to speak this up, what I can do is I can just go ahead and click on this guy and say uh, reschedule, reschedule check. force check. Yeah. <coughs> and then I can do that. I wish there was a way to do it on all services at once, but there's not. <laughs> that reschedule is handy when you're fixing okay, so things you got a as well because oh. you I'm think you should. Yeah. <laughs> so as you keep, you know, um, this will basically just bump it up. find the reschedule handy when I'm fixing it because it's like if I think I got it back, okay. I can reschedule the next check to yeah. go right now and, right. and make sure. Now that screen there, does it do a refresh? Uh, yeah, it will refresh. I forget exactly what it said. I mean, you can set it in the back. But if you just leave that screen up. You can leave it up, uh, yeah. Uh, yep. You'll get a fairly good idea of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And then you can just yeah. Okay. Okay. Red, bad, green, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and it also gives you the total up at the top. So it's yeah. okay, I got it. Oh, sure. services service are okay status, so to the critical. So that'd be like a dashboard screen you'd have. To yeah, well, there's there's a tap overview too, which is kind of like a uh, dashboard. It tells three, you. Yeah, there's three. three good, good. So you can see your and service. And the health is uh, dropping. And then you can go under the what I was talking about, like the problems. You can see them popping up there. And then the unhandled problems, since none of these are acknowledged, they're all unhandled. And then you can also see here uh, attempt. So one of four, two of four. Okay. You can see, you know, right now this hasn't went into what's called a hard state. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's still a soft fail. When it hits that four, see it's a soft state. Yeah. When it goes into a hard state, that's when it sends its notifications. Okay. So you can set it so the sensitivity. It won't work too soon. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got something that's really critical, you can set it. First time it goes down, alert me. If you have something that you don't really care that much about, sure. have it fail ten, have it fail five times before it alerts you. So yeah. you can set that.